Hey everybody, what up? In this video, I'm talking about why I moved away from Linode, Akamai, which if I'm even saying that correctly, I don't know how you say Akamai, but I think it's Akamai. I moved away from them after 10 plus years of doing business. And for anybody that's watched my channel for any length of time, you knew, you know that Linode actually sponsored my content for a long time. And honestly, they were the best sponsor I've ever worked with because once I stopped working with them after Akamai bought them or shortly before that, the um you know i i sort of realized like it wasn't worth doing sponsorship deals with pretty much any company because although i've worked with like active state and mongo and world of warships the company that makes that game whatever they're called a lot of different companies i've actually worked with some of them large billion dollar companies but it's always a pain to deal with uh the sponsorship deals and i just found it it wasn't worth my time or effort and then when i stopped doing sponsor deals like i realized like well you know youtube isn't really worth the time and effort for the money either unless i'm truly doing it to make interesting or content that i find interesting that could be valuable to others and i guess i was like struggling with that a little bit for a while so over the last year plus you know i, I just do videos whenever i feel like it basically um so that said uh linode was it was a great company they were the largest cloud hosting provider when they got bought and um I say largest cloud hosting provider, largest privately owned cloud hosting provider. And they got bought about a year ago or in February of 2022. It's been over a year now. And um, yeah, they were purchased for 900 million. So it was actually pretty cool when I was working with them. They were very easy to deal with when it came to a sponsorship deal. They're just like, hey, do what you're doing. Keep doing, you know, keep showing this ad and we'll write you a check every month, which was great. Other sponsors, there's like a whole lot of back and forth, and it's just like, like I said, it's just not worth it for the most part. So yeah, you can see they got bought by um, Akamai for 900 million. So as soon as they get bought, right, the website changes. It was really weird to see Linode go away. Like I have Linode uh, stuff all over my house, actually. Like they, they've sent me like T-shirts and and chargers and USB drives and like all these different things uh, that they had. So I had a lot of swag from Linode. I actually really appreciated that company for a long time, but. As soon as I got my bottom, they jacked up the price 20%. I noticed immediately that there was actually like a little bit um, less customer service. It felt like um, when I ran into a few problems, I didn't get any sort of timely responses like I used to with Linode. And then I saw that, you know, their pricing structure was also changing quite a bit. And I was also sort of locked into the stack. And this is one of the problems and complications with cloud computing is that you're really relying on another company to number one, be there, and number two, not be a dick. And when they start being a dick uh, or they just disappear altogether, that's when you realize like how much, how invested you are in their stack. And uh, a lot of technology is agnostic, right? Whether it's like front end code or back end code, database stuff. But a lot of that stuff is wired together through very precarious methods in the cloud and every cloud hosting pro provider is different so for my instance i'm talking about my website that i created a few years ago which is codehawk and the purpose behind codehawk was that i once had udemy steal my content like somebody uploaded like videos to udemy and like they sold it to twelve thousand people and you know technically on a price tag of 199 a course or whatever it was like 2.4 million on record uh, on paper now they didn't make that and i couldn't even sue them for that and i didn't have the attorney fees or the time to even deal with anything like that um, but it made me think like you know a lot of people were using udemy and uh, you know i think udemy is a, is a decent company um but i was just like you know what i'm tired of like the plural sites and the udemy's and having to like have them take a big cut of what you're trying to do especially when i don't have that big of an audience or that many uh, people that are that are interested or whatever I just wanted to create my own platform so mainly when I do these types of things it's actually to learn and become a better developer myself because everything I've ever done when, when I talk about my own personal endeavors for side projects uh, or the company that I've run or uh, any of that stuff has always actually like helped me in my career it's like I've always said build projects right when you build a project even like Codehawk which you know, let's be, let's be honest, it's not that sophisticated. It's not the net, next Netflix, but I am streaming video behind authentication, um, Node.js stack, React on the, the front end, a lot of other things like templating engines, MongoDB, uh, 
Nest.js is actually the, the, the framework for Node.js that I'm using. And, you know, there's, there's just, you know, there's a lot of things that have to come together, even for something basic like this. So I was very much locked into Linode, and when I decided to move away from them, I, that's when I actually realized, like, whoa, I actually have, there was way more in this project than, than I was aware of when I initially thought, oh, I'll just move it to a different cloud hosting provider. Uh, so I ended up moving to AWS. And a lot of people will probably immediately be like, well, AWS is more expensive than you know Akamai even now with their price hikes. And that is probably true. But my opinion is that if I'm going to spend a bunch of time being locked into another vendor's services, I'm going to go with the largest one in the world. And I'm also going to go with one that is going to apply throughout my career. So if I have to learn how to do things the AWS way, then that's just going to be the way that it is. It makes the most sense for somebody like me who's been doing this now for 17 years and plans to do it for another couple of decades, God willing. Um, and I, I need to be involved much more, and I feel like AWS. So Linode was great because I got a virtual private host, and um, I set up my servers, and and I think it was in New Jersey. And, you know, you get to, to log in and uh, you can SSH into your, your VPC and set up all your Nginx stuff and create your HTTPS certificates, your load balancers if you need anything like that. And I un understand load balancers is questionable on a single instance, although there is some benefit. Um, but all that stuff, um, you know, you had the, the ability to do it yourself. And when I moved to Linode, I was like, oh, well, this is much cheaper than AWS or Azure at the time. Uh, if Azure was even around, I don't even remember, honestly. I know AWS was. And Google Cloud Platform or Google, whatever they used to call it. Um, they used to call it Google App Engine, actually. And that thing was a disaster. And I, so I moved from that to, like, Shared Host. And I looked at Heroku and all these other different companies. And when I found Linode, I was like, this is it. This is awesome. This gives me the ability to do whatever it is I want to do. And they were great all this time. But then... I guess where I, I find the differences between Linode and AWS is that AWS's documentation is a nightmare. However, so is Linode's. And so is pretty much any documentation when you're looking at like Stack Overflow or even asking ChatGPT about obscure errors that you're receiving whether in the cloud or some sort of software that you're trying to install or some server that's not listening on the right port or some load balancer that's like doesn't have the right dns settings or any of these things that that occur it's going to be a nightmare wherever you go and i feel like with aws it has the tools to allow you to build basically whatever it is that you want to do so it makes a lot of sense to me. So now instead of actually like I used to stream my videos um, behind authentication, but I had Node handle that because of um, long story short, I was breaking it down. I could show you the code eventually. I'm not going to do that right now, but th there was a, a it was a pretty fairly decent way of uh, of using Node.js to actually stream bits of the video at a time and. Um, I kind of forget almost what I did, but I was like looking at the watermark and just chunking it and like having to do that by behind authentication was a little bit more difficult, right? You can't just have an MP4 out there on your server and make it publicly available where everybody can take your videos and stuff. Anyway, um, it worked well for what I needed it to do. And yes, I had a reverse proxy for all my other static content, like H, uh, H, like static HTML files, JavaScript, CSS, images, things like that. Uh, but the video was a little bit more complicated because you have to be logged in and are you paying and do you get to actually watch these videos and stuff. You know, and so that was actually working pretty well. But for something like AWS, they have something called like CloudFront, right? And although, you know, Linode has now servers or Akamai has servers all over the world, like you're going to pay for all of that stuff. But something like CloudFront, it has the ability to do basically, I mean, like Netflix type stuff. And it's just pretty much out of the box and you will pay for some of that stuff. But one of the great things about AWS is that you basically pay for what you use. And where Linode, I was in like a pricing model where I was paying a specific amount for some dedicated resources, but where they really got me was in the file sizes. So I didn't want to upgrade because I didn't need more CPU or more memory 
but I needed more hard disk space. And like the options were requiring that I like basically doubled the monthly cost to get more hard disk space. Whereas with AWS, like they're charging me separate for like the S3 and like CloudFront is its own thing. The EC2 instances are their own thing. I can choose to have a load balancer if I want. I, yeah, I just, I find after dealing with both of these and, and having Linode for 10 plus years that I would just rather be on AWS and I'd rather be locked into their infrastructure. And it's going to just be helpful, I think, throughout my career. So I think AWS is a good product. It's definitely not the thing that you see on YouTube a whole lot with like script kitties. I think most of the YouTube stuff in regards to like AWS is all about people that are in the trenches of, of working on that stuff in their corporate lives and they make videos here and there. Like I find a lot of script kitty basic tutorial things that you see from the popular YouTubers on YouTube, they don't mess with AWS because like they don't have the time or the knowledge or like industry knowledge or I, I just feel like a lot of them don't anyway because um, it is a relative nightmare. Yeah, because we used to have people that specialized in like networking and database stuff in front end and back end. And when you're dealing with AWS, like you're basically doing all that stuff yourself if you're going to set up a website that actually works. And more than just some sort of static blog or landing page or something like that or to do app that's running React on a server somewhere. I mean, I'm talking about real stuff where you have to connect to databases and you're writing to that database and you're streaming videos and you're dealing with authentication, authorization, emails, SSL, taking payments online, all of that stuff. I mean, that's like what your typical website runs into. And no matter if you choose AWS or Linode, you're going to be setting up all that stuff yourself. So yeah, I used to know a few people that were relatively high up in the Linode um, in the corporate business. And uh, I honestly wish them the best, man. That founder, Christopher uh, Aker, I mean, he, he, uh, I mean, he got, he had 900 million reasons to sell, you know what I mean? Obviously. And I don't blame him. I do the same thing. Um, I'm sure it was, uh, but yeah, building that from the ground up, he did an excellent job for a long time and hopefully all the employees landed on their feet if, uh, through the acquisition and everything. Uh, but I lost touch with him after that. And, um, yeah, I mean, I would sell too. So I don't blame Lenovo for selling to Akamai, but I also don't see any reason to stick with them anymore. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, codehawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. I've risen through the ranks from junior level developer all the way to director of engineering. And in addition to that, I'm also a YouTuber. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. My website has been around for several years. My company has been around for over a decade. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. There's currently over 40 courses on CodeHawk and I'm releasing more courses all the time. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.